So I've been asked to modify this CB here. So I've just went and did some testing in it in my other lab and verify that the thing works okay initially before I do anything, before I even open it up. It is working okay. The volume control is a bit scratchy and stuff like that. So these controls are all new cleaning, all a bit dirty. But otherwise it seems to be working okay. The RF power output is quite low. It's only about two and a half watts right now. So I need to obviously look at that when I do the realignment. But apart from that, it seems to basically be okay. So this is obviously the 29 Limited Classic. Good old favourite and made in 2000. Not too old really for Cobra, you know, but it's in pretty good condition actually, it's not bad. So I need to install one of my modification boards, this thing here, which is used to convert to New Zealand channels. Although New Zealand channels do actually allow for the Australian uh, slash FCC US frequencies as well. They're actually legal over here, so you can actually use them anyway. This allows them to convert to New Zealand channels, which is 26 P30. To 26770. So that's what that does. I have to get these custom made and everything for it to do the job. I'm just going to go through the conversion and maybe show you bits and pieces of it. And then I'll go through in the other lab. I'll take the camera with me and go in the other lab and we'll do some testing and just show you it working on the new frequencies. Interesting, this thing came with a power cable which was a piece of wire, no plug on it. So I'm going to have to actually contact the, uh, the owner of this and say, Do you want me to supply you a power cable? Because it didn't come with a power cable, which is somewhat odd. Um, it happens, but you know, it's just a bit weird that it has a piece of wire instead of a proper plugged cable. Anyway, we shall look at that later on. Don't forget to click like and subscribe to the channel if you've not been here before. Click the bell icon as well to make sure you get notifications about new videos. All that usual goodness. Pretty much what we expect. Any signs of playing? Let's have a look. Is a diode intact? It is. So it's looking like it's been left alone. No one's been messing with it. Sometimes the diodes on these things get cut to improve the AMC to get more modulation. It doesn't really work that well. But um, yeah, we'll see how this thing goes. I'm surprised about the power output being as low as it is though. Simple modification. Let's get on with it just takes a bit of time. So with the casings, unsolded the speaker wires, just so you've not got the casing slowly around so I don't get damaged. And uh, we shall play with this thing. I don't like this transistor sort of sitting like this, that doesn't look good does it? That all looks factory, can't see any signs or anything. Maybe a bit around here actually, that looks interesting around here. Yeah I think that's been resolded. so I think that's actually had the backlight bulb replaced at one point because I come to here and here and those have been resoldered so that's not too surprising. That happens a lot. Otherwise it looks fine. So we'll get on with it. Actually I might clean these controls first otherwise I might forget. So I'm going to get in there with some spray, a bit of deoxid, spray all these controls out, get them clean, get them all nice and fresh so they don't misbehave again. Right, so I just cleaned all the controls with some deoxid. I didn't bore you with that because it's not that exciting. Um, you can, well, I'll, I'll explain a little bit. So on the parts you can see you've got the terminals here, the wires get connect on them. So I'll just spray some yogurt in there so it runs into the part and then we'll tilt around a little bit. And the switches are done in a similar way, you can get into the top of the switches, they're all open. And you can spray a little bit in there and work the switches. Chance this is a bit harder because it's actually like a semi-sealed unit. But these aren't completely sealed so you can actually just run some stuff over the top of it. And it'll just leak itself in there and it'll clean itself. So I've got some in there. I mean it seemed okay anyway but I was doing it as a matter of precaution because these always do end up going a bit dodgy. So I'll spray some in there now, it shouldn't actually go dodgy. Okay, let's get on with it. So it's the solar disk capacitor which feeds through the 15 megahertz signal. So now I should be able to lift that capacitor up once I can identify which one of the ones that isn't as messy. I always forget which one it is. It's always a bit hard to find it. There you go, there's the board mounted up in place. Now it's got to put the wiring in. So let's attach this wire to this can here. I've already scraped the can up so I've got a decent uh, solder connection on it. Let's just get some solder on it. Get that flowing on there. And get the wire spun around and get it in the right place. Then we'll attach it to the board. So 
Sub onto the ball, it's over here. Then that's all secured, so I just come back and just redo this one, make sure it's sitting nicely. There we go. So that's that done. Now we've got to do the other wires, which are the output, which go to the mixer and the power supplier, which is a 5 volt rail. So I've got the connection done for the output. I've just done a connection now for the power supply. So attaching it to the jumper wire, which is next to the pier well here, because that's a nice spot to attach to. So we get into it, it's the hardest bit, especially when you're trying to watch at the same time. You just try and get a camera shot. I've done nothing even, even in a shot. Anyway. Let's concentrate on getting this onto the jumper. I doubt you can actually see that well, to be honest. That is attached. It looks fine. That's on there nicely. So that's all wired up. That should now actually work. Obviously I've got to do a realignment. I'm going to go and test it. If it's okay, we'll do the next bit. Alright, so here we are in my second lab, which you haven't really seen yet, I think. So, I've got my gear going here. The radio's here, I'm just doing testing. So, you can see I would have had it transmitting here, because the record data locks onto the last frequency you got. And I'm currently going into the frequency counter, which is detected directly from this probe here I'm using here, 10 times probe, straight onto the antenna connector. This actually needs quite high input levels in order to work. But it's also got one mega ohm input, so it should be okay. I've also got my Marconi 2955 monitoring this as well. I can see the power up there. And I've got my spectrum analyzer running over here as well. Which is still warming up and drifting everywhere because that's what it does. Um, so Marconi says we're off by 146 hertz. This also says about 146 hertz. So we're going to trim the 10 megahertz crystal in order to get this frequency down a bit more. Now I actually believe that the oscillator I'm using is slightly off frequency, but I can't adjust them, unfortunately. So I'm just going to leave this running very slightly high. Let's do 40 channels, or channel 40. And that's reading about right. I'll go up very slightly. That just goes to show me that the oscillator is indeed not quite right, because it's not the same frequency offset across the range. So that's 14, 15 around there. It's only barely detecting the signal. And that's 23, 24 around there, right? So you can see the frequency offset is not the same, which means my oscillator is obviously not quite the right frequency. It's very slightly high. So I'm just compensating for that. It's only marginal. I mean, 100 hertz here or there on AM, on CB, it, you probably won't even notice it anyway. So we should also check that the VCO voltages look okay. I already have done that, I'm going to demonstrate it again for you anyway. So just here you can see the VCO voltage when I actually do it. Try and get a radio shot too. Try to. So probe on here, on a negative, probe on the phase detector pin. Try and get back on the negative again. The not know which one I just need to be on the one. Okay. So we're getting exactly 3 volts there, channel 40, 2.1 volts, transmit 1.9, so I think we're okay. That's looking fine. It's not topping out in voltage. If it is about 4 volts, then I'll be getting worried. Um, or if it is less than 1 volt at the other end in transmit, then I'll be getting worried. Right there, that's fine. That's looking alright. We always have to check that because it may transmit fine, but you might be able to see. Okay, so that's working. Excellent. So I need to do some more testing with this that's found a new peak that's found a it's found its own reference frequency that's annoying <laughs> oh dear yeah this thing this it's found its own internal reference 130 kilohertz or something yeah i need to get a new spectrum analyzer this thing's ancient it works but it's um it's not like a modern one, which is much, much better. So if I come set frequency again, 26.5 will do it. And then we'll see the peak sharp over here again. If I switch over to my burn meter, 
which is just out of shot. So that's only showing about 3 watts because I haven't adjusted that part yet. I haven't done any alignment apart from that frequency right now. So I've got to go through the alignment and transmit and receive and get those peaked up like they're supposed to be. As far as spurious noise over here, 54 megahertz, it's looking alright. I need to get the level higher though. I need to hook into it properly. Let's do that. Let's use the scope probe again. And we've got to see if there's any noise at 54 megahertz. Or the abouts. I'm not going to hook directly on, it's going to go onto the cable. We get a much stronger signal there. Let's take the 10 times off. There we go. Alright, so still, still a peak search on that. That thing's just 27 megahertz, so you know, this thing is not great. <laughs> Alright. Um, okay, span. Let's go um, 60 megahertz. And you just see the peak just there. All right, so that's what we need to look for. I know it's up there, so let's go 54 megahertz. 54 megahertz. Right there, so that's that level there, which is really, really small. All right, so we should still try and get it down anyway. Let's get an appropriate screw over. So I'm trying to do, see, I'm winding this way, so it's getting worse. All right, so I've got to go the other way and get it better. All right, so there's nothing there right now. Let's actually try and go for a stronger signal. Look onto the actual cable. There we go. So I think that's as good as I'm going to get out of that right now. This is an ideal setup. I haven't really done much radio work in a while. Really, I should be using a dummy load, a pass through dummy load on this. I did buy one. Do you think I can find it? I think it's right there. That's the lowest point. That'll do me. You know, I still got to do the rest of the transmitter stuff first, but that's like the trap. It's got to be done. So just audio testing. One, two, three, four. That sounds all right. No distortion. And oh, we'll see. So I don't have a speaker, so I need to hook into this to get the speaker working. Oh, let's do testing on the receiver. I've just hooked up my probe on here so this will inject audio into this and stuff like that and I'll do proper testing on receiver on transmit as well but um, right now that's at minus 73 dBm on the RF level I'm getting minus 36 sine on channel 1 so I need to do some adjustment on this I'll stick mid range and volume scorch is definitely right down I have game, my gain all right up. Delta tune's definitely in the centre. This should all check all that stuff, obviously. That doesn't matter. Alright, so let's change this level. Get the side level down. That's it, almost 12 there. It's about 110, minus 110 dBm. 106. About 106. So this needs a tweak to get this up. So I shall start here. Now you peak it, get to peak and then back it back off a bit. Right. I tend to tune it in the end of the band, then I reconfirm in the centre. We've got the magic gain itself. Let's drop the level down some more. So you get 117 there. So there's the peak. I'll bring it back down slightly. So next adjustment. Pretty much right. Next one. It's also pretty much right. Next one. Get 
I've got a slight bit, a little bit of that one. A little bit of that one. Okay. It's about there as well. So most of them are basically bang on, just the main input ones, which now did the main adjustment. The main IF alignments were basically right. So let's just go a different frequency here. Uh, what do we want? 0, 2, channel 15. We want 15, no, we want 16. 15. There we go. Wind this down. Now I'm just going to repeat these just to make sure I've definitely got it right around the middle of the van. The hard thing is it does tend to lag a little bit behind. So I have to use my ears a bit there. Right, that's pretty much peaked. So I was basically was right there, I didn't really gain much out of that one. So, so we've got about 100, minus 117 dB in there. So that's okay without doing all the other adjustment parts as well. But it gives you an idea. We're good there. Okay, so I checked each end of the band as well after that slight adjustment. Now at channel 40, I'm getting minus 116.6, and at channel 1 is getting minus 117. So that's pretty even across the range, so I'm happy with that. That's good. So now I'm going to adjust the transmit side. I'm basically set up for this. Ignore the noise from that thing, it's not good. So. Just the AMC to get the modulation level down. Yeah. Okay, done. There's two channel 40 as well. That's looking alright. Ignore the power reading on here, this is wrong, this needs adjusting. I haven't calibrated the power reading on this thing yet. So I need to do, but I keep meaning to like, pull the thing out and do it and go around to it. So that is incorrect. But uh, modulation up slightly, I suppose. Yeah, close enough. Done. So I should just show you this too. I'll just set the signal meter. Minus 73 dBm. And uh, S9 reading on a signal meter. Done. Alright, the next thing I need to do is clean this microphone because this switch is really dodgy. So, the radio's finished. It's got it sitting on the side there with the seals drying. So, this switch is good clean. It's, it's really scratchy. So, let's get some stuff for in there. So, it's got some standard deoxy for this one. So, this, the gentle stuff, which is used for adjustments and trimmers. So, can you in there. We'll get through the contacts and that should come up and pretty nice. Let's put it back together again, that'll be fine. Alright, let's put this thing back together. And I think we're done. One updated radio, realigned, checked, cleaned up, back to full service again. We're done. Found it interesting? Give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. No, don't click like, subscribe. Don't forget to do those things. And click the bell icon if you haven't been here before. So you get to see new ones. Bye.